Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the Argon Neo 5 NVMe case for the Raspberry Pi 5. This includes a heatsink, a cooling fan, and an adapter board that takes any common size of M.2 NVMe SSD. So let's go and take a closer look. So, here we have our Argon Neo 5 NVMe case, which is a reassuringly heavy, and this seems to sell for a variety of prices, although at the time of shooting this video, it's listed for $38 on the Argon 40 website, the manufacturer website, and for £34.80 on Pimeroni here in the UK. Although I did pay a bit more to get one shipped via Amazon EU, so I can make this video as soon as possible. But generally, this costs the same or less than the typical Pi 5 case, cooler, and M.2 NVMe hat. Although, as I'm sure some people are already saying in the comments, by the time you've bought a Raspberry Pi 5 and this case, you'll have spent more than the cost of some mini PCs. This all noted, let's bring in Stanley the knife. Here he is and get inside. Just got to cut through a piece of the stuff on the top like that. Very exciting. And now, how do I get in? It's, it's rammed in here. Oh, there we are. There's obviously a bag. Can we get... How do I get it out? It's going to be one of my more difficult unboxings, I can tell already. Come on. Out you come. There we are, look. Oh, instructions. And uh, also... The thing itself, let's get it out the bag. How do I get out the bag? Should we do it this way? There we are. Lots of exciting noises. And oh, there we are. This is uh, rather posh, isn't it? And uh, top piece is definitely metal. Can we get it off? It's stuck. There we are. That's the top section, top of the case. And then this is the bit that goes on the Pi, which is uh, also metal. It's basically integrated into a heat sink cooler on the top. That's a uh, rather nifty. And then here is the bottom of the case. This is plastic, although that seems that this bit is metal. This is the uh, the door, I think, which you take off to put in your NVMe drive. You can see on the other side. Oh, yes, it's going in there. And here we have a little bag containing presumably a connector for the Pi's PCIe connector. It'll go, I'm sure, to that bit on the case. And there's some screws in here, thermal pads, things like that. So this all looks very exciting. I will now go and read, I'm sure, the instructions, grab a Raspberry Pi 5, and put this all together. Greetings. I've now thoroughly inspected all the parts. They really are of a very high quality. And I've even read the instructions, which I have to admit are very good indeed. And guess what? I've also found a Raspberry Pi 5, which will fit in something like that. And then uh, this part with the heat sink and the cooler and the end of the case, this goes on something uh, like that. And then the top piece will go obviously on the top uh, like that. This really is a very, very nice case. But uh, this isn't quite the order it all goes together. And before I start putting things together, what I want to do is to just take out the pie and flick this over like that and to remove this uh, bottom door where we're going to fit our NVMe drive. So I'll just take out these screws. There we go. This is the uh, NVMe cover. This is metal and it's great to see it screws into little uh, metal inserts. So if you need to remove this and put it back lots of times, you're not going to be damaging where a screw thread goes into a, a plastic case. And clearly our NVMe drive is going to go in here. This is clearly a heat pad because this door can function as a heat sink. That's rather neat. Not sure I'm going to fit it that way, but it can do. And obviously the drive will, uh, will go in here like this. Anyway, if we go back to the Pi and the heat sink part of the case, we need to take these heat pads that came in a little bag and we need to apply these heat pads to the SOC and the power management unit. So I'll get on with that, removing the backings first. There we go, bit of a, a fiddly job. And the next thing we need to do is to make sure the fan wire is fed through the hole which the GPIO connector comes through. So this goes through here, like this, like uh, that, somewhere under there. And this now then needs to be plugged in to the appropriate connector 
on the Raspberry Pi. You've got to get this one the right way round, which I think is the way uh, like that it is. This plugs in there. Sorry, I'm obscuring your vision, but uh, we'll just put it in like that, and I'll give you a close-up so you can see it's there. And then next, we need to connect the PCIe ribbon cable to the PCIe connector on the Pi. And to do that, we first need to raise the edges of the connector like that. And then we need to take the ribbon cable, and you can see the copper side of the cable is going to face the connectors on the Pi. It drops in like uh, that. And then I now need just to uh, push down on the edges. How can I do this without getting too much in camera? I probably can't, but uh, there we are. The cable is now connected. And if you think that was fiddly, our next feat is going to be miraculous because what we've got to do is to put the Pi onto this section of the case and this wire needs to go through here and we need to route the uh, cable for the fan around this edge bit. So this really is not easy at all. I'm going to try and do this on camera in real time but I may or may not succeed with that. Let's just see how we are doing. And uh, this is not going to be easy. Yes, I think I'll... Uh, I'll fast forward to this bit of action until it is completed. And uh, I think I've got this okay, but I have to admit, this is one of these things, it's very easy to write in a manual, difficult to do in the real world. And if you're worried about this, you could of course route the fan cable just directly across the top. It wouldn't be quite as neat, but it'd be a lot easier. But uh, I have actually managed to get things, I think, in the right place here. We've got the fan cable goes in there, loops around there, goes under the bottom there, so it isn't gonna get caught in the screws when we put those in. It isn't easy, this, it really isn't. But uh, there we are, that's got that part of the construction okay. Next, we need to return to the base of the case where the PCI ribbon cable is going to connect in here. And for this to happen, we need to open up the connector like that and that. That's now ready to receive the cable. And talking of the cable, by the magic of filmmaking, it's now poking up like this. It's coming through from the top. It's been looped through that little uh, hole like that and it now pokes out there. So this thing here has to go into there. How do we make this happen? We put our friend, the screwdriver underneath. I don't know what the name of that screwdriver is. I think it's called Philip, probably Philip the screwdriver. You never know, there's a lot of screwdrivers called Philip. And ideally I can just get this in here, which is not gonna be easy, but uh, there we are. That has gone in. We can secure that, hopefully, like this and this and this and this, that is secured and then in theory this whole thing now fits together. We can put the top on something like this and uh, if that all fits in and isn't actually damaging anything on the inside hopefully that's gone in all right. That looks okay. I think that's fine which means I can now put in some screws and in fact I've got to put in some screws because things want to leap out so let me grab the screwdriver And uh, there we are, I think we're now ready for our NVMe SSD. And the driving question is this one. This is a crucial P3 Plus. And before somebody says it in the comments, yes, this is a PCIe 4.0 drive. We're only running single lane PCIe 3.0 on the Pi, so this is overkill. But it's a good value drive I happen to have available. And it's also already got Raspberry Pi OS on it, and I've used it in previous tests. So I thought it'd be good to use this particular drive so we can do some comparative tests in a few minutes' time. So let's take this and fit it in the case. We're just going to go in here, as we can see. There's a mounting hole for all different sizes of M.2 SSD. So let's just remove this screw from the one we're going to use, the 2280, like that. And then I can uh, fit the drive. There we go, and we can now fit the uh, bottom cover. This is the metal cover that can have the uh, pad fitted if you want to use this as a heat sink. I'm not going to do that, I don't want to fit something onto this drive. And also I'm not worried about heat on a drive that's going to be running at uh, PCIe 3.0 speeds with uh, just one lane. But you can fit the, uh, the heat sink strip if you wish. There we go. And if anyone's noticed I've switched screwdrivers from, to this screwdriver from that screwdriver, it's because this one is a more magnetic for holding the screw to put in the, the M.2 NVMe SSD. Anyway, all I've got left to do is to fit some sticky feet on the case. There we go, nice uh, finishing touch. And uh, there we are, we have our Pi 5 in this case with an M.2 NVMe SSD. And I rather like it without the top on it. It's uh, rather wacky. We've obviously got access to all the GPIO connectors. 
If you want to fit a real-time clock battery, you can easily put one in here. But uh, I think we'll also have the full effect. We'll put the top on, which just goes on uh, like that, and uh, put in the final screws. And there we are. We've got a Raspberry Pi 5 with an SSD in a case that reminds me for some reason of a ZX Spectrum power supply. So I think it now must be time to get this all connected up and then we can boot up and run some tests. Right, here we all are operational with Raspberry Pi OS running very well indeed from SSD. And the reason that everything has just worked is that Raspberry Pi OS was already installed on the SSD with the Raspberry Pi 5 already configured to access and boot from the drive because I did the required setup when I tested out a Pineberry hat drive a few months ago. And for those who've not previously set up their Pi to work with an NVMe SSD, Argon 40 do provide a setup script, which is very well documented as we can see here in the manual. And the key thing this does is to edit the EEPROM and config text files to allow NVMe SSD access with the interface set to run at PCIe Gen 3 speed. And this works fine, even though the Pi 5 is only officially rated for PCIe Gen 2. If you want to set things up manually as I did, this is all covered in my previous Pinebree hat drive video, where I also show how I copied Raspberry Pi OS to the M.2 NVMe drive. So let's go to a terminal and do a list block devices command, lsblk, and uh, there we are, we can see our NVMe drive. And of course, we're now going to run a speed test. But just before we do so, it's worth noting that exactly the same drive with exactly the same configuration reported a speed of about 816 megabytes a second using the Pinebury Pi hat drive. So let's see how performance here compares. Let's run our speed test. Very exciting. And uh, what are we going to get? And uh, come on, come on, Pi, you can do it. Give us a test result. There we are, 781 megabytes a second. So a little bit slower. I've run this test several times, and it does seem that the same SSD in the Argon Neo 5 does deliver slightly lower performance. But it's still a very decent speed for a Raspberry Pi 5 drive, and a lot faster than, for example, the SATA 3 SSDs that so many computers still happily use. So I do view this as a perfectly decent result. Now, for my final trick, I thought we should run my standard Pi 5 temperature test, which is the script we have here that runs for 20 minutes, taking an SOC temperature reading every two minutes. This is the script I used in a previous video where I compared the performance of a standard Raspberry Pi 5 case and coolers in various combinations, as well as the performance of the GeekPi heatsink case. So let's uh, run the script here using the Argon Neo 5. Here it is all ready to go, and uh, let's let it uh, execute. There we go, there's our first temperature measurement, and we'll now speed on through. And there we are. A very impressive set of results, and indeed, if we put up a cross onto our table, you can see they are really an extremely impressive set of results. They beat anything I've tested previously. And if the fan did come on, it's been running very quietly, because throughout the test, the Raspberry Pi 5 has been silent. As you can see, I have left a column for running the test again with the top removed, so let's let everything cool down and uh, do just that, remove the top and repeat the test. And there we are, another even more impressive set of results. There is a no doubt at all, as we can see now back on the table, that the Argon Neo 5 NVMe provides a fantastic Raspberry Pi 5 cooling solution. The Argon Neo 5 NVMe is a fantastic product. Build quality is uh, excellent, as is cooling, as we've just seen, and I really like the way that the SSD is fitted in its own accessible compartment. 
The only downside is that the microSD card slot on the Pi is not accessible, although I do know that's difficult to achieve given the location of the Pi's PCIe connector. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.